Athens is the capital and the largest city of Greece. Its history spans over 3400 years and its earliest human presence began somewhere between the 11th and the 7th millennia BCE. The journey from the airport to the city center takes approximately 35 to 40 minutes. Bus tickets are sold at the ticket booth outside the arrival hall. Don't forget to validate your ticket as soon as you enter the bus. Pericles was a Greek politician and general during the golden age of Athens. He was prominent and influential in Athenian politics and was acclaimed by Thucydides as the first citizen of Athens. Built in 1874, the Corgia Square served as the start and finish venue of the Athens Historic Center circuit for the men's and women's road race event in the 2004 Summer Olympics. The neoclassical city hall was designed by Panayotis Kalkos and completed in 1874. After several renovations, it was restored back to its original state in the 1990s. This small picturesque church of Agia Paraskevi was constructed during the Turkish occupation of Greece.
Cyclothmos square's name is derived from an ancient Greek word which means weeping. At its center is the memorial of national reconciliation, a symbolic portrayal of the official ending of the civil war. Created by the Greek sculptor Vasilis Doropoulos, it was unveiled in Founded in 1882, the National Historical Museum is the oldest of its kind in Greece. It is located in the Old Parliament House, which housed the Hellenic Parliament from 1875 until 1932. In front of the museum, this imposing statue of Theodoros Kolokotronis is one of the most important Greek sculpture. He was a Greek general and the preeminent leader of the Greek War of Independence against the Ottoman Empire. This was the site of an important cemetery and numerous funerary sculptures erected along the sacred way. A road from Athens to Eleusis, the district Keramikos, was once the potter's quarter of the city and gave rise to the English word ceramics. Established in 1926, the Academy of Athens is Greece's national academy and the highest research establishment in the country. On either side of the building's prostyle, there are two statues. On the right, that of Apollo, the god of archery, music and dance, truth and prophecy, healing and diseases. On the left, that of Athena, the goddess of wisdom and military victory and also the patron of the city of Athens. Both are mounted on pillars in the Ionian rhythm and are works by Idrosis. The academy's main building is one of the major landmarks of Athens and one of Theophil Hansen's trilogy. The other two are the National Library of Greece and the National and Kapodistrian University of Athens. 
this building is a neoclassical masterpiece. Its top is adorned with the statues of ancient Greek gods. The academy was recently selected as the main motive for a high value euro collector's coin. The 100 euro Greek Academy of Athens commemorative coin minted in 2004 to commemorate the 2004 Summer Olympics. The National and Kapodistrian University of Athens is an integral part of the modern Greek academic and intellectual tradition. It has been in continuous operation since its establishment in 1837 and is the oldest higher education institution of the modern Greek state and the first contemporary university in both the Balkan Peninsula and the Eastern Mediterranean. This picturesque holy church of Hagia Dynamis is a small church whose origins date back to the 16th century. It was built over the ruins of older structures, perhaps an ancient temple. At the center of Athens, there is one of the most important monuments of Byzantine architecture, the church dedicated to the presentation of Virgin Mary, known as Panagia Capnicaria. It is one of the oldest churches in Athens. It is estimated that the church was built sometime in the 11th century. As it was common with the early Christian churches, this was built over an ancient Greek temple dedicated to the worship of a goddess, possibly Athena or Demeter. Most of the paintings inside the church are the work of the artist Fortis Contoglo and his pupils, a school of hagiography strongly influenced by Byzantine tradition. The Metropolitan Cathedral of the Annunciation, popularly known as the Metropolis, is the cathedral church of the Archbishopric of Athens and all of Greece.
In front of the cathedral is the statue of Constantine the 11. He was the last Byzantine emperor reigning from 1449 until his death in the battle at the fall of the Constantinople in 1453. The construction of the cathedral began on Christmas Day 1842 with the laying of the cornerstone by King Otto and Queen Amelia. The cathedral remains a major landmark in Athens and the site of important ceremonies with national political figures present as well as weddings and funerals of notable personalities. Just next to the Great Metropolis is the Church of Saint Eleutherius, also called the Little Metropolis. This 12th century Byzantine church is dedicated to both Agios Eleutherius and Panagia Georgiopoulos. It was once the city's cathedral but now stands in the shadows of the much larger new cathedral. The church has a typical Byzantine layout being cross in square with a three-aisled nave with the central aisle higher than the flanking ones. Athens is Europe's oldest capital. This city is the birthplace of democracy, arts, science and philosophy of western civilization. In 500 BC, a system was enacted here where eligible citizens could directly vote on laws giving rise to democracy. Syntagma Square is the central square of Athens. It is the most important square of modern Athens from both a historical and social point of view at the heart of commercial activity and Greek politics. The square is named after the constitution that Otto, the first king of Greece, was obliged to grant after a popular and military uprising on 3rd September 1843. 
It is located in front of the 19th century old royal palace, housing the Greek parliament since 1934. The old royal palace neoclassical building is immediately across Amelias Avenue to the east and surrounded by the extensive national gardens which are open to the public. The construction of this building lasted from 1836 till 1842 and it was designed by the German architect Friedrich von Gartner. Every hour on the hour the changing of the guard occurs outside the building. Here we will see the guards known as F zones which are a unit of the Hellenic army standing rigid and unflinching in front of the monument of the unknown soldier which commemorates all the unknown soldiers who lost their lives at war The Royal Garden in Central Athens was commissioned by Amelia, the first queen of modern Greece in 1838 and completed by 1840. It was designed by the German agronomist Friedrich Schmidt. In the 1920s, the park was opened to the public and renamed National Garden. In honor of Amelia of Greece, the entrance was moved to the 12 palm she planted. The Zapion is a large palatial building next to the National Garden. It was used during the 1896 Summer Olympics as the main fencing hall. A decade later at the 1906 Intercollegiate Games, it was used as the Olympic Village.
the Hadrian's Arch is a monumental gateway resembling a Roman triumphal arch. It spanned an ancient road from the center of Athens to the complex of structures on the eastern side of the city that included the Temple of Olympian Zeus. It has been proposed that the arch was built to celebrate the adventures of the Roman Emperor Hadrian and to honor him for his many benefactions to the city. On the occasion of the dedication of the nearby temple complex in 131 or 132 AD. In the heart of Athens stands an enormous open space bordered by trees and shrubs, the Olympion, a tranquil archaeological park where massive marble columns stretch upward, marking the temple of Olympian Zeus. During the Roman period, the temple, which included 104 colossal columns, was renowned as the largest temple in Greece and housed one of the largest cult statues in the ancient world. The temple, also known as the Olympion, is a former colossal temple. It was dedicated to the Olympian Zeus, a name originating from his position as head of the Olympian gods. Once inside the entrance of this age-old sanctuary, visitors are treated to a taste of nature, an extraordinary ancient ruin on a superhuman scale. The construction began in the 6th century BC during the rule of the Athenian tyrants, who envisaged building the greatest temple in the ancient world. It was not completed until the reign of the Roman Emperor Hadrian in the 2nd century AD, some 638 years after the project had begun. Mount Lycabetus is a Cretaceous limestone hill in the Greek capital Athens. 
are 277 meters above sea level. Its summit is the highest point in central Athens and at its peak stands the 19th century chapel of St. George and the bell tower. Lycabitus appears in various legends. Popular stories suggest it was once the refuge of wolves, which is possibly the origin of its name. Mythologically, Mount Lycabitus is known from the times that the twelve Olympian gods ruled the world. According to Greek mythology, goddess Athena was the patron goddess of the city of Athens. To honor her, Athenians built the Parthenon, the majestic temple up on the Acropolis complex. At some point, Athena flew around the city to find a huge rock. Her plan was to place it in front of the Acropolis hill to protect the citadel from invaders. As she was carrying the rock on her way back, a crow approached her bearing some bad news. Athena was startled and the big rock fell off her hands and onto the ground. This is how Mount Lycabitus was created. Athena, angered over the ill news the crow brought to her, cursed it to never be able to fly above the Acropolis. Since that day, crows have been seen as the symbol of a bad omen.
At the top of the hill you will find a small double chapel, one half dedicated to St. George and the other to Prophet Elias and St. Constantine. The viewing platform in front of the church provides sprawling views of Athens with a magnificent shot of the Acropolis and beyond, stretching out to the coastline and the Aegean Sea. <laughs> 